Hi, this is Seth Mosley, and you're listening to the Full Circle Music Show, the why of the music biz. Today, we are bringing you a special episode. It's an inside look at one of our secret events, our songwriters retreat that we did just about a month and a half ago. And this episode is really, really powerful because we are going to take you inside the minds of CCM hit songwriters and publishers. What are they thinking? What are the struggles? What are the challenges? And how and why do they do what they do? We've got with us in studio a live audience, so you'll be hearing some of their questions, which is always a fun thing. We love hearing from you guys. We love hearing from the listeners. I love it. This is kind of a fun experience. We, we got to be a part of an event called GMA Immerse the past few days. If you guys don't know it, check it out. Get registered for next year. But it's always fun to see our listeners there and to hear stories of how a podcast episode or an interview or a story impacted them and inspired them to do something different and to make a change. So we love, love hearing from you guys. Always feel free to reach out to us at support at fullcirclemusic.com. But Here with us, we have, from the Secret Songwriters Retreat, we have Jason Gray, who's a mega successful Christian artist, one of the best songwriters in our entire industry. And we've got Ben Calhoun, who many of you know. He's part of the Full Circle family and has been a large part of our Full Circle Academy events and programs. So he's here and he's a front man, singer-songwriter of the band Citizen Way. They've got a new single that's blowing up on radio right now called Bulletproof. And then we've also got the industry veteran publisher, who is also a member of the Full Circle family, Stacy Wilbur. She talks about what do publishing deals look like? Why do you get a publishing deal? What do publishers look for? And some other things that every Christian songwriter needs to know. Well, scratch that. Not every Christian songwriter. Every songwriter should just know these things. That's what I love about these interviews is, You know, we work a lot in the Christian music business and we do some in country and pop as well, but the content and the stories really apply to anybody. It applies to anybody in this business. So if you're a songwriter or an artist out there, do not miss this episode. Stick around to the end. And I think that's about all I got. So we are going to head into the studio live at Full Circle Music in Franklin, Tennessee. We are live here in Franklin, Tennessee at the Full Circle Music Studios at our first ever secret event. Woo! Songwriters Woo! Retreat with a live studio audience. Yay! Yay! And we've got with us a panel of three of my favorite people in the world. Oh. Ben Calhoun from the band Citizen Way. Yay. Yeah. Yes. We got Stacy Wilbur, industry veteran music publisher and creative director for Full Circle Music. And we've got Jason Gray. Which one of us is your most favorite though? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> so what we're gonna be doing this morning, and, and what I love about these panels is it's really just an opportunity to hear from our audience. I don't generally give these things a title because I don't know what the questions are going to be. But we've got in the room with us at the secret event, 12 songwriters that have flown from all parts of North America to be here. So to our audience, use this opportunity. You're here. You've got Jason, Stacy, and Ben who collectively have over a half century of music business experience together. So one of us has actually... Just about a half century. (laughs) (laughs) We'll let you guys figure out who that is later. (laughs) Why don't you guys give us your quick 30-second introduction. Where are you? What are you doing today? And what excites you about the music business right now? Hi, everybody. I'm Ben Calhoun from Citizen Way. And I have a beautiful wife and two daughters. And every song is about my life and about what I'm hoping to be and what I don't know and what I do. In Jesus' name. And so... I think what we do is important. And I think what you guys are doing here is right on the money. So we're glad you're here. That's very good. Hi, my name is Stacy Wilbur. I am a music publisher, manager, encourager. My motto is encourage, inspire, create. I hope that I can, whoever I'm working with, whether it is a producer or a songwriter or a friend or family member, I hope that I can encourage 
them in a way that inspires them so that they can go back and create the best music, the best art that they can. My name is Jason Gray, and I'm just hoping to get some free donuts. <laughs> no, I, um, I'm a singer songwriter. I should explain here, I, I do have a speech handicap, so just as you hear that, I haven't been drinking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not speaking in tongues. Unless you have an interpretation, then maybe, maybe that's what was happening. And I, I didn't realize it, but ever since I was a boy, I had a sense that music was what I was intended for. There is a quote by Frederick Buechner. He says, the place that you are called to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger intersect. And for me in my life, I was aware at an early age that music was the place where I believed my deep gladness and the world's deep hunger met. So I've been trying to live in that space for most of my life. So I grew up on the road with my mom's bar band. And so I was always around music, but as a little boy, my first memory of hearing the voice of God was when I was listening to Bridge Over Troubled Water as a third grader and had the sense as I was hearing this song, like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down. Something in my heart went, hey, this is how God feels about you. What I think is remarkable about that is that I didn't grow up in the church. There wasn't anybody to encourage me to interpret a song that way. So I think that had to be the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been grateful for that because it's a reminder that God is able to make himself heard with or without our help or permission. And in my story, it was through a Jewish agnostic pop singer songwriter named Paul Simon <laughs> that God was able to first make himself heard mm. in my heart. And a reminder that Music is the voice of God. In a lot of ways, I believe that, you know, so I've been chasing that mystery ever since and uh, happy to get to chase that with you guys a little bit this morning. Yeah, good. So Ben and Jason, you're both songwriters and artists. Stacey, you're, you're a music publisher. Where we're at in 2017 today, do you think it's a good time to be a songwriter or not? And why? It's challenging for me in the new paradigm of music. You know, I've heard that uh, the great thing about having a speech handicap is all the dramatic tension. What's he going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I think it starts with a P because I've heard several P's. Um, One Republic recently did a post about how they aren't as interested in making albums. He wants to just do songs. And that seems to be where everybody is headed. So it's challenging for the kind of songwriter I am because it's more about singles. And I've never been all that interested in singles. Like when I buy a record, I'm like, oh, I like the single, but I actually love track eight, you know? And so the way that I've always written songs is, okay, here are the songs where my heartbeat is and where I feel like the holy mystery is. And it's just kind of harder to make those songs into a single. So I guess I have to write three singles as well. You know, it's challenging for me to figure out what that means for what I value as a songwriter and how to make those songs heard, how to make a living at that, you know, because the songs that come most naturally for me and that feel the most important to me on my records are not the singles. Mm. I love singles though too, you know, but like it's, what does that mean for the deeper cuts that uh, are where I get my juice from as the creator? So I don't know what the answer to that is yet. So is that a disheartening thing to you as a fan of albums? A little bit, but I suspect that the current way that people are consuming music now in terms of singles and playlists. I have to think that, you know, oh, okay. It's like, I love Oreos and you give me a 
thing of Oreos. I'm going to be excited about it. I'm going to pop Oreos like I'm a champion, you know, <laughs> until all of a sudden, like, man, eating all these Oreos is kind of made me kind of hungry for some broccoli, you know, <laughs> broccoli sounds good after a whole sleeve of Oreos, you know? So, uh, so I'm tempted to believe that things are going to come back around and yeah. we're going to rediscover mm -hmm. our appetite for that deeper musical experience mm -hmm. that comes from hearing a whole album and hearing what an artist has to communicate through the course of 10 to 12 songs. You know, does that make sense? It's great. It's great. Mm -hmm. That's Stacey, what I hope is happening. Yeah. Hopefully, Stacey, you've worked with a lot of, that long. you've worked with a lot of writers over the years and how do you address as a music publisher when a writer comes to you and just says, I've got nothing. I'm empty. I'm running on fumes. The whole idea of writer's block. How do you, how do you encourage and inspire them when they're in that season? Well, I think it depends on the songwriter. Hopefully I have a good relationship with that songwriter. It depends on if that person's just been for months and months, just going, going, going. They just might need a break. You know, they may need a, small vacation, just some time to get out in nature, take a walk, take a run, you know, take some time just to clear your head, clear your brain. Sometimes they just might need to go see a movie, mm -hmm. you know, read a book. Read a book yeah. I'm personally constantly going to movies and reading books. And so I may suggest a movie or a book, something that will, and I've talked about this a lot lately to some of my friends, just something that's going to ignite your heart in another way that's outside of just going to see another show or going to hear more music, but step outside of that a little bit just to clear your headspace and do something that go horseback riding or go for a hike or go for a drive in the country. Or, you know, maybe that's going into the city to go see a baseball game or a hockey game, something that takes you outside of that music, the normal that you're doing every single day. Cause it's hard to every single day come into the office and write a song with sometimes people that you don't know. And sometimes you're writing one or two songs a day. So, you know, you look at a whole year of that, you're going to get tired. You need to have some outlets to be with your family. Yeah. It's good. So along that line, Ben, you've been writing, as we heard earlier, over a thousand songs before you had your first Citizen Way song that was cut. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of songs. And a lot of the songwriters in this room are writing Christian songs or Christian songwriters. How do you write a new song about God after writing a thousand songs? Well, that's in some ways it's easy and it's impossible because our infinite God has infinite ways of describing him. The only thing I know how to do is to tell it from my perspective and write what you know. One of the best pieces of advice I ever received was from our mutual friend, Joel Hansen. Mm -hmm. Joel yeah, Hansen, Joel. you know? My favorite band in the world, PFR. Joel is a triumvirate. He can write, sing, and play his keister off. He's amazing. And he said, Ben, just write what you know. And what I know is I love to study God's word. I grew up in ministry. It's what I know. I know how to talk to church people. I know how to talk to people who hate the church because I, I just do what the Bible says. I speak the truth in love. And so one of the best pieces of advice I ever got from Jason was nothing he ever said to me. I just hurt with him, you know, just listened. Mm -hmm. And I think you just need to take a little snapshot of where you are in your life and write a song about it. And you'll never have a repeat. There's never going to be a moment that's happened before. And every song is its own brand. And so you just bring it to life simply by doing what you know. Mm, that's good. You asked, reminded me of a C.S. Lewis quote that has been helpful to me around that. He says, actually, Ben, I'm going to have you read this because uh, you don't have a speech oh, handicap. Yeah. But it's, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. This is from C.S. Lewis. Even in literature and art, no man who bothers about originality will ever be original. Whereas if you simply try to tell the truth without caring two pence how often it has been told before, mm. you will nine times out of ten become original without ever having noticed it. C.S. Lewis. Wow. And I also think just observing the people around you as well, because if you don't have a story in you, other people have their own stories. So I experienced this even just 
a couple of days ago, I was in the airport and I noticed, you know, we can tend to have our phones and we're looking at them the whole time. And I just really felt like the Holy Spirit was like, put your phone down and observe the people around you. I ended up getting into this amazing conversation with a, with a woman and I was like, oh, she, what a story. What an incredible story. And I would have missed that hmm. had I been on my phone the whole time. So just being observant with the things around you and the beauty that God has made, those are other ways to find yeah. a way to, to write a song through that. So mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got a great little piece of advice on that. And then I want to turn it over to our audience questions because that's the whole point of this panel. But I downloaded an app. If you want to write it down, it's called Moment on your iPhone. And all it does is track your time that you use your phone every day. And it just shows it to you at the end of the week. So you can look back and say, oh, Monday, I was on my phone for seven hours. Like, <laughs> you will be shocked. It's called Moment. It's called Moment. So there's a little tidbit. And I love Stacy's word on that. Just put your phone down. You'd be surprised what you missed. <laughs> so we're here at our first ever Full Circle Academy secret event with 12 songwriters that have flown in from all parts of the country. And we're here with three black belts in the songwriting industry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your time. Speak loudly. Throw out your questions. The mics will pick you up. Hi. <laughs> Hi. My name is Amy and I'll be relocating to Nashville in September. What are some things that you wish you would have known before moving here that you'd like to share to somebody that's new and knows nothing about the city and the industry as far as just your own personal experiences? It's probably going to take about eight times as long to break into the the places and the communities and the situations that you might be hoping for. That's very discouraging. (laughs) Maybe they've got something. It may not, but you know, I spent so many years in this work where just like so broke and so discouraged and like, do I throw in the towel or do, okay, you know what? Okay, Lord, I'm going to give it one more year for you to show up and, uh, make this clear to me and all that kind of stuff. And then a year would pass and I was still really broke and really discouraged, but there was just enough little things where it's like, well, okay, it's kind of hard to interpret it. It's still not exactly clear. It's not the breakthrough moment I was, but there's enough here to be kind of um, curious about. So, okay, I'm going to give it one more year. And I gave it one more year for about the past 20 years. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm still feeling that way, you know, so like uh, waiting for the I've arrived moment is, but I I don't know if I wish I would have known that. Maybe it helped me be less anxious about things if I just knew like this is just going to take way longer than I think it should or. I think. I, unless you're Lauren Daigle. Right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe is what I do know, I can help you. Everybody's trying to do the same thing. And so the best thing you can do is just be what you're best at and, you know, bloom where you're planted. And if you really have a skill, play that card over and over and over. And it might not be the thing that you originally thought it was, you know, there's a number of things that people move here for, but what they actually end up doing to pay the bills, I would suggest, hopefully it's not something you hate, do what you love and the money will follow. Another Joel Hansen quote. And if songwriting can be a part of that, I mean, absolutely do it. Regardless of if you ever get paid for it, you have to do it. it. You won't sleep unless you do. But don't forsake some of the other strengths that you do have as well. And which actually might enable you to you know, be a songwriter even more so because you capitalize on what you're actually really, really amazing at. So you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater in some ways and just keep going. Be faithful in the little things and, and show up to work every day and love on people and be available and, and be a good friend. And don't always just push your stuff on everybody. And you know it, it can get to the point of where you're just that guy or that gal. And he's, you, know, you can easily avoid that simply by just having fun, loving on people, laughing a lot, and letting the Lord open the doors. I'd like to add, hopefully this is helpful. The breakthroughs that I've had in my career have hardly ever come from the 
places where I expected them to. It's always been through the back door. An example, I was, I was trying to make ends meet and all this. Kind of, and then I had this opportunity to play at Barnes and Noble. And so I played at this Barnes and Noble. There were like, I don't know, eight people there. It was so discouraging. It's just like one of those, this is one of the worst things ever. And I just, you know, what am I doing with my life? All that kind of stuff. And it was a horrible gig, but there was one person in the audience who was there and I was kind of annoying him because I was a distraction because he wanted a quiet evening at Barnes and Noble, but I kind of caught his attention. Anyway, we became friends and he became a supporter. And over the course of my career, he probably contributed about $50,000 and helped me buy my house, my first house. And so I've, I've got stories like that all the time of like this horrible gig. And, but that was usually where I would meet a person or something would happen that carried me through in my career. It was hardly ever the big obvious opportunity. Does that make sense? So that's good. Next question. So obviously the music business today is not what anybody has known from recent years. And you asked the question, Seth, about, you know, what's it like to be a songwriter today? I guess I'm curious from you guys' perspective, we seem to be in this just major transition mode of the industry in a lot of different ways. What do you think is going to happen next? And maybe what do you want to see happen next? How are you guys trying to influence kind of this next wave of the industry and what that means for songwriters? Man, I, Honestly, like that stuff just is way over my head. All I know is that great songs win every time. If you only major on that thing, you know, major on the majors, like great songs repeat. (laughs) And that will open up doors that you didn't even know were there. And that's because, again, it's that supernatural element from the Holy Spirit, you know, your best booking agent. And that's all I've ever known how to do. I have no idea how to forecast sometimes. I think I kind of have some hints and I, I do treat songs that way. I'm like, I think this will work for a crowd. And I think this will work for the church. Or I think this will be a good, I mean, this is where the industry is. And I, honestly, like, I don't think about it too much. I more feel. I'm like, oh, that's a cool song. Let's do something like that. It's very simple. When you, when you really try to scientifically, you know, extrapolate it, I think you end up just muting it. And so I think you just feel a little bit more than you normally do and just go for it and and then repeat. Yeah. And I just feel like it's forever changing. Like just when you, yeah. you're like, okay, the streaming thing, let's get, or downloads. It's like downloads are kind of over. So let's focus on streaming. I think it's exactly what he said. If we are so focused on down the road that we miss what's happening today. so. Just even in in what you know we're doing at full circle, it's like we're looking at all options, mm-hmm. and we're running after all options and all opportunities. But um, I just think that every single day it's forever changing, so you just kind of have to be flexible and be willing to go after and learn all different elements of the industry. And I think, like what you said, it's it's too hard to try to figure out what's going to happen next because. As soon as you focus on that, it's going to shift and change. So stay true to what's happening today. What's happening, you know, focus on what you can do today, what you can do tomorrow. And yeah. yeah. And along that, the methods of delivery are going to change and they always have changed and they will always change. It won't be that surprising to me if in the future we take our music as a pill. <laughs> you just never know. But the end result is the same. It's us implanting a song in the heart of a listener. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to go back to what Ben said, I think whether it's on a vinyl or whether they're streaming it or whether you get paid for it or not, that's even the other reality yeah. or how you get paid for yeah. it. The goal is still the same to impact the listener with a song. I uh, was reading an interview with David Lynch last night, who's a filmmaker. He did Mulholland Drive, Blue Velvet, Twin Peaks, a very compelling, artistic, visionary kind of director. And uh, he has abandoned making films because he says in the current movie environment, 
it's too hard to make a great film because everything kind of has to be a blockbuster spectacle. So he's like, I'm out. So he's moved into TV now and is making a series for Showtime. And that has become the place where he can be David Lynch and all of his David Lynchness. You know, I'm of the mindset that the current reality of radio is a little bit like that. Like it kind of has, in my experience, squeezed the life out or what I love about music. I'm probably not going to hear on the radio. So I get excited about playlists because why have we turned to playlists on Spotify? Cause we want to hear something cool and that's kind of outside the box and makes us feel something. And so it seems to me like there is an opportunity for very interesting, unique, personal songs to have a life there that no longer have, you know, like Rich Mullins, I don't think would have a career at radio at this time, you know, but his songs were so beautiful and so personal. I think songs like that though would have a life on a Spotify playlist or something like that. So I suspect, I don't know. With the downfall and doom and gloom of the album being dead now, I feel like singles are, there's a lot more competition for songwriters to, like, I guess what I'm saying is for like newer songwriters, we could get our feet wet with like really deep cuts for people. Mm. So do you have any advice for like a newer songwriter? Like there ain't no way we're getting the single, you know what I'm saying? So where can we get our feet wet? Why aren't you getting the single? How do you get in the room with someone? I like the story, the uh, Aaron Schuess, My Hope Is In You. What was her name? Mm. April Jesbray. I don't think anybody yeah. knew who she was. Actually, April Jezre, we she's friends with Michael Fordnall, who is a guy that we worked with at Brentwood Benson. And we had recently met with her, but she had already written My Hope Is In You. What I'll say is when we now putting myself on this side of the table, owning a label and doing the radio <laughs> thing and having the song meetings, really at the end of the day, when you're in those rooms and you're in those meetings, nobody is thinking about who wrote the song. They're just thinking, okay, which is the best song? Because ultimately, as labels, we want to have the biggest win. And whether that comes from a brand new artist, a brand new songwriter, or somebody like Jason Ingram, it really, at the end of the day, doesn't matter. But to go back to your question on, well, how do you get your feet wet? Because ultimately, you did hit on a good point. And it's important to try and get in the room as a songwriter. If you're trying to be a career songwriter who's not an artist, you really, the end goal is you want to be in the room with artists writing for their record. Now, in the beginning, that's most likely not going to be possible five days a week. But do it and get whatever opportunity you can. And often you're going to start with the up-and-comers. You're going to start with the development acts. And then you're going to write and invest a ton of time with them. And then hopefully one of their things takes, and then you become the guy who wrote that song and people call you because you wrote that song. And then you get invited into more artist rooms because artists are like, Oh, I like what you did with this person. So it's to go back to Jason's point, it always takes eight times longer than you think or hope it would, but that's where you start at least. And definitely where I started. You know, Dan and I are actually good friends. We've written three or four songs, all of which I'm going to actually really put a demo on and an effort on for our next record. You know, maybe just encourage you specifically, dude, like, you know what I love writing about Dan is that he comes, he's excited to be there. He's a good friend. He's a good listener. And he brings good ideas and he champions great ideas and it's always fun. And so, dude, just keep doing what you're doing. Dude, thanks, man. It's good. Anybody else? Yeah, it's just keep showing up. We've kind of said that over and over, but keep showing up because just like Seth said, you might be that guy that writes that next big hit. None of us really know that. You don't even know that going into a room, but yeah, just keep showing up. And like Ben said, don't give up. I heard Tom Hanks do an interview where he was asked, what's the secret to your success? He said, "I, I kept showing up and I didn't give up. Until they were like, well, this guy is not going to leave us alone. So, okay, we're going <laughs> to, I think about that a lot, you know? Yeah. Good. 
Next question. Would your suggestions be for artists like myself who don't live even close to here, but want to collaborate and and be part of community? I live in Maine, and we have a pretty good music scene, but it's a lot more mine. You know, yeah. people aren't quite as open to collaboration, and I love that. I come down here. Suggestions on how to grow that. I came down here a lot. Like I just moved here in November, but for the past 10 years, I've, I've just come down here a lot. And so, yeah. 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 This is a great place to do it, but honestly, we need people in Maine. <laughs> we do. Nashville is packed, you know, and there's always room for one more and another song, but maybe it's time for you to really think of a new way to form your own, you know, group or your own full circle Academy up in Maine. Maybe it's through your local church or maybe a local coffee shop. And you're just the guy that just connects everybody. And you set up this, maybe it's a competition or a songwriter's forum and you bring in free food and everybody shares their songs and you just pray that it happens naturally. And you're the guy that just ignites the fire. You know, I mean, I think you could be great at that, dude. Yeah. I love the saying that you don't see a door, build one. (laughs) Yes. Live by that. Uh Uh-huh. How do you submit to publishing companies, like your songs or demos that you've done or anything like that? Because a lot of people say they don't take unsolicited work. It's a great question. You show up at events like this. (laughs) It really is. It's about relationships. I mean, I know that we've kind of talked about that as well and getting in the room with people, showing up at events, this one or Immerse finding ways to get in front of the music users, whether it's a publisher or producer or other songwriters. It is. I mean, a lot of times with the bigger publishing companies, you're right. They, we don't accept unsolicited material, but it is all about relationships. And this town is full of, like Seth said, everybody in this town is a songwriter or a musician or an artist, or sound engineer, or somehow related into the industry. So one of those people that you come across is going to you know, end up becoming your friend and, and just showing up, just showing up to things and establishing those relationships is probably one of the best ways. Because I feel like we were talking about PROs even, performance royalty organizations. Those are also another great way to have your songs listened to. Finding, I know some of you are affiliated with a PRO, but you don't know anyone there. But I would encourage you to make a phone call, show up, go look online and see they're constantly having songwriter events or panels. Go to those, get to know some of the reps there at the performance royalty organizations because they can really help you along the way. That's another music industry person to be able to listen to your songs and to encourage you and to maybe set up some co-writes or help you along the way. So I would really encourage you. Not a lot of people think about that. You do it just to, you know, you send your songs there. So hopefully if you get a cut, you get your royalties, but you're not thinking a relationship. But there's some really great people at the PROs and they can be really helpful. So that's just another way to to do it. There's a great quote that might fit along with everything we're talking about. Relationally, especially, it's all about people. I mean, people more than your product. Your product is a piece of plastic. It used to be on a shelf. Now it's just a bite. It's going to be a pill. It's a pill. It's going to be a pill. (laughs) You heard it here, folks. (laughs) But I think it's going to be a long time before people are pills. And so people, it's, it's all about people. It's relationship. But I love this little quote, be a fountain, not a drain. Keep giving. I, I, you always remember me this, Seth. You know, give away a lot. Just give it away. You know, uh, we were talking about that last night. I think Jeff brought it up. You know, but be a fountain, not a drain. In the songs, just sometimes the sheer amount, and really try to keep the quality as high as you can, so that people are coming to you as a source rather than running away from you because you're taking from them. Whatever that means to you, and whatever situation going through be a fountain not a drain yeah i always go back and and this is totally goes along with what he said but always give first ask second give first That's ask great. second That's great. if you can figure out That's a way great. and i'm not saying that you should do this but if you can figure out a way to go find who the publisher is that you want to get their info show up at their place wash their car spotless 
and then leave your demo. That's awesome. They'll remember that. <laughs> they will. That, that's great. That's just one Sir, idea. You yeah. may be. Yeah, I don't know if that's exactly legal. So <laughs> I'm not an attorney. I don't pretend to be one. Talk to your entertainment attorney about that if that's legal or not. But the point is, a lot of the time, that's the beauty of internships because that's where you can really get to know somebody and have them get to know you and your character. And often your connection to the earlier question Amy had, what you may contribute at first may have nothing to do with songwriting. Maybe the publisher needs help on social media. You can show up and say, hey, I noticed you have X, Y, and Z, and I think I could help you with that. Would you be open to that? It's just a doorway that's open for relationship. And then they're going to be way more apt to listening Sure. when you do play them songs. So got time for one more question. So we talked about it's like a very single driven market now with streaming and all that stuff. How, like in your guys' efforts, because you're all in pretty different capacities, like how targeted are your efforts with songs? Like, are you getting like fed information from labels like, hey, we need this type of song for this artist or for this genre? Since it's such a specific window, like, are you getting fed that information? Or are you just coming up with stuff and then hoping that it hits? Or how does that work? I always think of the Death Star. <laughs> stay on target stay on target <laughs> I think you should have a target and hit it and if you don't know what the target is ask somebody I mean the target is always going to be great songs win and the definition of what a great song is if you want to learn how to write great songs then listen to great songs over and over and over and over and beads is I mean I never ever get tired of listening to songs I, it's a gift I guess my wife would be like turn that thing on <laughs> I'm like, but did you hear the turnaround after the second chorus? How they flipped it. Like, <laughs> have a target, hit your target, repeat. Jason, I'd be interested to yeah. hear your perspective on that because you write for yeah. yourself as an artist. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to share an anecdote and then a philosophy just because it came into my mind and this has been helpful to me. So, in case it's helpful to anybody else, I remember hearing a story about David Wilcox, who's an amazing singer-songwriter. He talked about there being at least two different categories of songs. And one is like, okay, you know what? I want to help people and I want to help the most people I can. And so I'm going to pour my effort into doing that. And okay, what I've been able to accomplish is everybody's going to get a tax refund. Now it's going to be eight cents because, you know, but everybody's going to get it. So like if you think of a song like, uh, I got a feeling that's going to be a great night. Uh, you know, it's worth about eight cents. It's not going to change anybody's life really, but everybody got to enjoy it. And it was just, you know, very broad. Then there's this other category of song, which it's not for everybody, but for the one person who it is for, it's like going into the burning building of, of their life and pulling them out. And it was only for them, but for them, it, it meant everything, you know, and that's helpful for me. Like, you know, when I sit down and start working on songs, remember to value both of those. I want to be clear too. Like I don't have contempt for singles. Actually, singles don't come naturally for me. And so they are a wonderful challenge. I find going after a single very exhilarating. And so I love doing that. And all of these things I try to do as, as an act of love. I think that my main job is to love people. And so when I'm going after a single, I can have all the information about here's your target audience. Here's what they care about. And having that knowledge can be dangerous because it's kind of like the knowledge of good and evil because then all of a sudden I can manipulate if I want to, you know, like, when I'm standing before an audience, I can see in front of me like, oh, if I say this or do this, I'll get them to like me. I can get them to buy my record. And so a lot of my work is don't hit any of those buttons. Don't be manipulative. And just because I don't think that's loving my audience, you know, but if I can love them, it's the love of the Lord and make that connection then they're probably going to buy my record anyway, you know? <laughs> and I can uh, accomplish that without 
losing my own heart, you know? And so in that space, I can write a single out of love for my audience. And in that space, I can also write a deep cut, like a song about grief. I can do that. And a song about grief, I don't think is ever going to be a single. Like, I don't think that's ever going to work at pop radio, but it still has value. And I can do both of those things from the same heart space and the same obedience, you know? So that's kind of, you know, and just being aware of those categories and that they're all valuable. It's good. So we've been here at the Full Circle Academy Secret Event Songwriters Retreat on the Full Circle Music Show with our live studio audience. Hey, this is Seth Mosley, and you've been listening to the Full Circle Music Show, the why of the music biz. If you're not already subscribed to us on iTunes, go ahead and do that right now. It takes two seconds. Helps us out a ton. Our show has been growing like crazy over the last few months. Tell your friends. Some people have come up to us last night at this event that we did at GMA Immerse, and they said, well, how can I help? Well, my biggest thing is hit share. Go on your social media, copy paste the link, share it with your friends who need to know this information and who need to hear these stories. So do that. Leave us a rating and a review. Again, we are so thankful for you guys coming through and us together hitting 100 reviews on iTunes. And in fact, I think we're way past that now. So we've been able to chart in the top iTunes music podcasts, which is exciting. I think I logged on there one of these days in the past few weeks and saw us right on top of Avicii, who's one of my favorite DJs, which was very exciting. And that's all thanks to you guys. So again, head over, hit subscribe, share it with a friend, and stay tuned because we are going to be bringing you some special announcements in the next coming months. You're not going to want to miss some of the things that we have going on at Full Circle Academy. We are settled into our new studio. Follow us on Instagram again if you're not already. See pictures of it at Full Circle Music Co. And we will see you next week.